We are now in section three, chapter three, section two. I wanted to go back to the start of chapter three and point out that in 3.1, we studied measures of central tendency. We are now going to be looking at measures of variation. And then to point out where we're going, a thing called measures of position and then some explore, exploratory data analysis, the summary. And so looking at 3-2, it mentions measures of variation. I'm on page 135. You should have out your book, pen, pencil, paper, sticky notes, highlighter, anything and everything so that you can take some great notes. And we're starting where it does say at the bottom, measures of variation. I will read. You can highlight. I'm not going to read everything. That'll be up to you to do on your own. Just remember, do this section well. Make it all sink in. Work through it until it does. And we do have help. You have Ask My Instructor inside the homework. That goes straight to me. We also have online tutoring available. Measures of variation. In statistics, to describe the data set accurately, statisticians must know more than the measure of central tendency, which is what we looked at in our last section. So it starts us out with this really cool example, and it talks about comparison of outdoor paint and there's a testing lab, and they want to see how long um, it, it's going to last before fading, that this paint is going to last. They have two small populations. That's going to be really important that you keep understanding if we're dealing with a population or a sample, because our symbols are going to be different. And then it wants to know the mean of each. So it does the mean of brand A, comes up with 35 months. It does the mean of brand B, and it comes up with 35 months. So we just did a measure of central tendency, and wow, these just, you know, they look the same. However, since the means are equal, you might conclude that both brands of paint last equally. Well, however, or equally well, <laughs> however, when the data sets are examined graphically, a somewhat different conclusion might be drawn, and then it shows them down here. Like, if you notice here, like doing a dot plot, all of these happen at one point in time. But then if you look at the other brand, and I already drew like a little normal curve over it, they're closer together. These are more spread out. So noticing right here, for the spread or variability, this section is called measures of variation. So maybe get an index card going on that, or highlight that, or a sticky note somewhere. But for the spread or variability of a data set, three measures are commonly used. So definitely get those index cards going. Range, you got to know what it is, what it looks like, how you would calculate it, when you would want to use it. Variance, same thing on this. Variance and standard deviation. You need to know what variance is, how to calculate it, where will you find the formula. Uh, standard deviation, how do these two relate? How can you find one? And wow, you basically got the other one. We are going to do a whole lot with especially variance and standard deviation. You definitely will want to be pausing these videos often. There are a bunch of short videos, but you'll want to pause them and reflect and really make sure that you're understanding the concept very well. So we're going to start with, if that was like an introduction, but we're going to keep going and look at these terms, starting with range. So I would do a flashcard, again, or marking of the information in your notes, or with sticky notes in the book, or both. Or you're starting a list of vocabulary, like a vocabulary glossary for yourself. But it mentions that the range, here's the formula. You need to have this one memorized. And you may already have it memorized, because if you think about what range is, it's like from a here to a there. And so that's what's happening. You're going from the lowest to the highest, and you want to know how far spaced is this, or how far apart are they. So example 316 does that. It takes the two uh, amounts of the days that this is, uh, the cans are lasting before fading, and like this one, the lowest is 10, and the highest is 60, so you subtract them and you get a range of 50, which is exactly what they did here, that they got a range of 50 months. If we look at brand B, um, lowest number, highest number, you subtract those two like they did here, and you get a range of 20 months. It says make sure you it is given as a single number. I would put that on my index card. 
and it, the, it, it then it explains the one range was 50 months the other was 20 and then be able to make some kind of statement about it and I always like these that say like they're twice or half and it says this value is less than a half of the duration of this 50 months which is the range of the duration of the paint fading or you can say that 50 is twice as long it, however you want to say it one extremely high or one extremely low data value can affect the range markedly and I would jot that down on my index card I then am asking you in your notes to do this one on your own the top grossing movies so it gives you an example of top grossing movies it says find the range I would cover up the answer do this one by yourself and then celebrate go back and review think about range